trigonometric transformations. This is maybe how you feel in migraine, hypertension, stress, <laughs> trigonometry. <laughs> so remember the graphs of sine x, cos x, and tan x. Um, so I'm just trying to remind you. So sine, do you remember what sine does? Sine starts off, goes like this. Like that. Now I always like to draw the curve first. I'm just showing you the first period of it at least. Of course it continues forever, both sides, but this is x's and y's here. Just say no, I'll just label these everywhere. Just so we have them. All right, and we also have a uh, cosine. That one starts off at up here at the top, and this one goes sort of down and then up, something like that. And remember what the period is. This is really important to know. The period of this one here is 2 pi. So that means this value right here then must be 2 pi. So is this one. However, 10 is a little bit different. It's got a period of just pi. So let's take a look at these numbers and let's try to label things. So this one right here then, if this is 2 pi, remember there's these sort of five points we need to know about for sine, something like that, and then these are the five points for cos, 2, 3, 4, 5. This value is also at 2 pi. Well, if the period is 2 pi, half of that must be just pi. And then divide that by 2, we have pi over 2. And then we can count. We can count 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, so this must be 3 pi over 2. Same thing here. This must be pi. This must be pi over 2. So same idea here. 1, 2, this must be 3 pi over 2. Keep in mind what the height here is. This is 1, this is minus 1, this is 1, this is minus 1. This is the graphs of sine and cosine. Of course, the first period of them. Keep in mind, they keep going forever, don't they? So they, they go like this, and backwards too. They keep going, whatevs. All right, how does tan go? Tan's a little bit different. It has some um, asymptotes. Maybe I'll draw them here. So this right here is the first one right here. There's another one right here. This is going to be at minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. And then we have it one more time, another time over here. This right here will be 3 pi over 2. Over here will be at 0, and this value here will be at pi. Because it goes 0 pi over 2, that means another pi over 2 must be pi, see that? And then after that, so that's 0, that's 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, so this must be 3 pi over 2. And the way the curve goes, if you remember from 10, it has a point right here and it basically goes like this. So it's got these vertical asymptotes and it goes like this. Something at least like this. It's not perfect, that's why it's a sketch. All right, well why did I bother showing you these? I've already shown you this in another video. Well, that's because now we're gonna do some transformations. We're going to take this idea here and we're going to write a sine or a cos or a tan. It turns out these tricks work for all three. I'm just going to focus on, uh, well, let's just look at this one here. We'll look at how this one works because they, they do the same things. If we have some number in front of A, oh, sorry, some number in front of the sine, that's called A. In the brackets right here, this is called B. This is a C and a D. These are all coefficients. They're just values. So they're like 1, 2, 5, negative 5, I don't know, whatever. So let's look at the meaning of each of these. So we'll just focus on this one, but keep in mind it does the same here, it does the same here, just to focus on one. A is called the amplitude. That's how high it goes. So if you remember uh, from the topic transformations, we already talked about all this stuff. That's why it's not actually new. This is kind of a review, although maybe you haven't seen it exactly written this way. But A is the amplitude. That's the height, so to speak. Remember it went from 1 to negative 1 here, 1 to negative 1? Well, in this case, it'll do something different. So let's see what happens here. This is the amplitude. So let me show you this graph here. Mm, if I want to do 2 sine x, what I like to do is draw myself a dotted line of what just regular sine x would do. So this is just going to be a graph of sine x. Okay, this right here, a dotted line will be my reference, so to speak. So this will be, this is 1, and this is minus 1. This, by the way, is still 2 pi. That's the period of sine x. This is pi. I bet you're getting tired of seeing me do this. Pi over 2, and this then must be 3 pi over 2. All right. But now what happens is this thing here has an amplitude of 2 now. So that means it has to go twice as high. 
that means I need a value up here at 2 and a value down here at minus 2. And the real graph then will do, well, it'll start off here, it'll go up to here, it'll go back down to the middle, it'll go down all the way down there and up here. So it'll go something like this. Keep in mind I'm not perfect at drawing these things, but I hope you get the idea. So what happened then? It got stretched, didn't it? It was like a vertical stretch. That's what the amplitude did. Yay. All right, B is just a period, right? Wrong. B is not equal to the period. This is really important. It's not equal to the period. <laughs> this is actually really important, okay? So keep that in mind. B is not equal to the period. But it tells you something about the period. So let me write it like this instead. I'll say so B equals, well, it's going to be um, 360 degrees over the period. Or you could say it's 2 pi radians, because 2 pi radians is the same thing as 360 degrees. It depends if you're working in radians or degrees. So period. I don't know why it looks like pure lod. It's the I here, like this. So this is the case. So keep in mind, B is not equal to the period. Remember this. This is really important. That's why I tried to sort of show you the mistake on purpose. A lot of students mess this up. They just think B is the period. No. Or you can say, you can rearrange this, say the period is 360 over b. Here the period is 2 pi over b. So let's take a look at what this means. So this graph here of sine x. All right, well normally, again, remember the graph of sine wants to do this. It wants to go like this, and like this, and like this, let's just say. Okay, so these are my x's and my y's. And remember, normally, this right here wants to be um, 2 pi. Let's take a look at what to actually do. You know what I'm going to do instead? I'm actually going to remove this for a second. I'm actually going to go ahead and figure out what is the period here. So this, let's see, in this case right here, we have uh, B is 2. Now this is looking like it's in radians, so I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to say find the period then. It's just going to be, let's see, it's 2 pi over B. So it's going to be 2 pi over B, but B is 2. So that means the period, I'll write like pair for short, so pair is then 2 pi over 2. The 2's cancel out, I hope you see that. So therefore, the period is just going to be pi. Now, why is this going to be helpful? Is that means I can then just draw myself my sine curve. I won't even need a reference one. I'll just draw myself a nice sine curve. So there's one. There we go. I do know that the x values, at least, this will be nice and easy, uh, sorry, the y values. The amplitude is still 1, isn't it? So there's a little 1 here, so this is a 1, this is a minus 1. However, this value is not 2 pi anymore. I've made my period pi. So watch carefully. I just label this pi. If that's pi, half of that must be pi over 2. Watch carefully. Now this is going to go different. Look. Then half of that is pi over 4. All right. And if I count, I count by 1 pi over 4. This must be 2 pi over 4, but that reduces. This, therefore, must be 3 pi over 4. See how that wasn't so obvious? That's why I've been showing you how to count in these weird units like this, because I like to, I like to show you how to actually get these numbers here. Okay, I'm just trying to make my 3 nicer, my pi nicer over 4. Phew, so there we go. There's all our points we needed to sketch this. Okay, so A is the amplitude, B is not the period, but it's related. All right, let's keep going with this same idea here, the same, same idea. So we have still looking at A sine BX plus C, but it could be a cos as well. C is a horizontal shift. That means you take your whole graph, you bring it left or right. And because it's inside the bracket, it does opposite to what you might think. So if you think, oh, plus 2 means you go to the right by 2. Nope, you go left by 2. By the way, uh, so that'll be the key one here. Maybe I'll put that one right there in blue, just like I did before. So that's C is the horizontal shift, left or right. Let's take a look at this right here. So if I'm looking at this graph right here, um, I'll do this right here with X's and Y's. Same thing here, X's and Y's. Now let's take a look at this and try to figure it out. This is a cosine graph, but what's happened to it? The cosine graph has been, well, let's try to decipher what happened here. A plus pi over 2, you'd think it went to the right by pi over 2, so nope. That means it went left by pi over 2. That means everything went to the left by pi over 2. 
So let's see if we can figure out what a regular graph of coast would look like. A regular graph would do this. I'm just going to do a dotted version. Like this right here, right? And of course, it keeps going like this. I'll just draw a little bit of it like this. Now, let me just draw where the main points are here. This right here, one whole period would be right here. Normally, the period is 2 pi. All right. If that's 2 pi, this right here must be just pi. This right here then must be pi over 2. And 1, 2, this must be 3 pi over 2. Now keep in mind what's going on here. This right here is a height of 1. This is a height of minus 1 here. That hasn't changed. The amplitude's still 1. Except what do I do? Oh, by the way, this right here is a minus pi over 2, I guess, technically. So what happens is this. Every single point goes to the left by pi over 2, which means, watch carefully, this point goes to the left by pi over 2, this point goes to the left by pi over 2, this point goes to the left, this point goes to the left, this point goes to the left, and so on. Do you notice what happens then? So it goes something like, like that. So the whole thing has just been moved. If you look at it, it looks just like a sine curve, except it's a minus. So this turns out this is the same thing as saying minus sine. Um, all right. D is a vertical shift. That's actually the easiest one. That's the good news. This is, I think, the easiest one. Just everything just goes up or down by a certain amount. So that means this one right here, which wants to be a regular sine x. Sine x normally just goes like this, doesn't it? Like this. Right. And this right here again. I think you're getting the hang of it, right? Pi, you're watching me do it a lot at least. Hopefully you're getting tired of it, but that means it's because you understand it. So 3 pi over 2 here. These are normal. This is 1. This is minus 1. So now the whole thing has been shifted up by 3. That's what this means here. This plus 3 means up by 3. That's the meaning of this. So up by 3. That means I take every single point on this thing here, and I move them up by 3. So this point right here, whoop, maybe I need to draw myself some more numbers here. So 2, 3, and maybe I'll need this one here at 4. I'll make my y up here, and I'll just delete it over here. Maybe that'll help. There we go. So let's see if we can do this here. So every single point goes up by 3. That means this point, which was right here, goes 1, 2, 3. This point goes up by 1, 2, 3. That's the maximum there. This point right here, which is down here, goes 1, 2, 3. Get the idea? This point right here goes 1, 2, 3. This point right here goes 1, 2, 3. And if you notice, it looks just like the curve did, except the whole thing has been moved up by 3. You see, it's not that bad. Keep in mind, it keeps going, doesn't it? Like that. But this just shows you this whole thing has just been shifted up. So now we've seen all four of these transformations. We can, of course, put a minus in front, like we've learned with the transformations. That does a reflection across the x-axis. But... Um, Let's just take a look and see if we can deal with this. By the way, these are transformations. That's why I have this one to describe how the transformer works. Ha, ha, ha. So we have this graph of f of x, and it undergoes a series of transformations until we have g of x. Okay? And f of x is just a cos. So we've done these different things to it. Let's try to isolate and tell what everything is here. This right here is a. This right here is b. This right here is c. And this right here is d. So all you got to do is just remember what everything means. This is actually a really easy question. Watch. What's the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is just A. And A equals 2. So great. That was actually, that was it. The amplitude is 2. That means if we need to draw this thing, it goes up and down by 2. All right. That was kind of nice. Let's keep going then. So um, what is the period? Is the period equal to B? No. The period is not equal to b, but the period is equal to something related to b. It's 2 pi over b. So what could we say then? And we can infer that it should be uh, radians, not degrees, because we've got some pi's going on. So um, let's see now. Well, we know that b is 3. So that means that the period must be, let's see, it must be 2 pi over b, which is 3. That's it. Now, that would be a hard one to draw, wouldn't it? But, I mean, you could. You could just draw yourself. Watch, I could I could attempt to do it, right? Wouldn't I just draw myself some sort of graph like this right here? And then I would just, oops, not this. It's a cos. So it would look something like uh, this right here. And I would just say, all right, this value right here is 2 pi over 3. 
It would get a little bit complicated because I'd have to do half of that, which would be 2 pi over 6, and half of that. It would get a little bit complicated looking, but you get the idea. All right, what kind of horizontal translation do we have to go? Well, what they're really asking for is C here. That's really what they're asking for. So this is, they want C. Well, plus pi makes you think it goes to the right by pi, but that means then it goes left by pi. That's what happens here. Everything gets moved to the left. Just like we did over here, where everything went left by pi over 2. In this case over here, everything will go left by pi. So we could have drawn that if we needed to, but in this case, in this question, we didn't even have to draw it. What kind of vertical translation was there? Well, that's another easy one as well. That's just D. They're just asking for D. And D equals, this is really easy, it's just minus 8. What does that mean? That means you can say down. That's what this means, right? So everything's been shifted down by 8. Isn't that easy? That's it. So we're actually done with this question. Hooray! Now you may be wondering, <laughs> when can we actually use this stuff? Turns out we use this stuff quite a bit in everyday life, well at least in modeling. So when we model periodic phenomena, so things that repeat, things like tides or a bicycle wheel or things like that. In physics we have something called simple harmonic motion. These kind of things are very well modeled by sinusoidal graphs. So these kind of, these kind of shapes that go up and down like this. Okay, but I hope this here helps, and maybe you don't feel quite so bad as this.